Raspberry Pi is a new computer. It was designed by some people at Cambridge University and they were trying to make something that every school kid could, could afford. So it costs $35 and anyone can buy one now. I ordered one from Allied Electronics and it was back ordered. It took three months I think to come, but I finally got it. That's it, that's the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> These two chips contain the ARM processor and the graphics processor and the uh, 512 megabytes of RAM. This is a micro USB adapter, micro USB jack right here. That's, that's what powers this thing. So you plug a micro USB uh, cable into that and, uh, and that provides the power. This is the HDMI output. Uh, so you can hook up a, an HDMI monitor. Um, so here on the end you see the Ethernet uh, uh, socket and the two USB ports. Um, this is the, uh, the audio output, uh, composite video output. These are the GPIO pins, the general purpose input output pins. You can connect sensors, switches, lights, all kinds of things to some of these pins. Uh, these two connectors here I think uh, are for future expansion and I think there are plans to, to make it so you can plug a camera into either maybe one or the other of these two things. On the back we have uh, uh, the SD card. Um, this is where you plug in an SD card for, for storage uh, instead of a disk drive. It uses an SD card. I'm sure that you noticed that the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a case. It's just a circuit board. Well, this sounds like a great project for the Solidoodle 3D printer. I downloaded the Raspberry Pi case from Thingiverse and I've run it through Skeinforge, which makes the G-code file that you can actually print. And I've loaded it into Printerface here, this program, and so it's ready to print on the 3D printer. So I just have to click the print button. Print. It took two, almost uh, two hours to print this case, but when it got through, well, it's pretty nice. So the Raspberry Pi fits in the lower half. like that, and then this half fits on. Like that, so there you have it, Raspberry Pi in a case, printed on the 3D printer. The Raspberry Pi does not come with a disk drive or an operating system. It doesn't even have a place for a, for a disk drive to plug into it. Uh, instead, it's got this, this slot in the end for an SD card. Well, an SD card, serves as a sort of a solid state disk drive for the Raspberry Pi. Before you can use it though, you have to write an operating system to it. Well, I think you can run Ubuntu on it, I think you can run various operating systems on it, but the obvious choice is what Raspberry Pi suggests. It's called Raspberryan. It's a version of, of, of Linux, it's a version of uh, Debian Linux, and you can download it from their website. So that's the next step, is download the operating system and, and burn that or write that to this SD card. I've already downloaded the Raspberry and operating system to my desktop and I've unzipped it to make this file. I'm using Ubuntu Linux on this computer, so I will uh, launch a program called Image Writer. You choose the, uh, choose the image file and I've already inserted the SD card into the slot. Uh, on the computer. So there it is. So I choose that and then click Write to Device. Now I have the Raspberry Pi in its case and I've got an SD card with the operating system on it. Uh, all I need to do is hook up the wires to everything and see what happens. So the SD card goes in the end like that and the Ethernet jack, uh, Ethernet plug goes right here The uh, USB mouse and keyboard go there. This is a this is an audio cable that goes to uh, an amplifier. This is an HDMI plug that goes to uh, the TV set in front of me. 
And finally, the last thing to connect is the power. This is a uh, micro USB cable. It's got a micro USB plug on a, on a USB cable that's connected to a USB port on the monitor. You can plug it into pretty much any USB port that supplies power. Uh, even a cell phone charger will work. All this does is power the thing. And as soon as I plug in the power, a uh, light comes on in the corner. That seems like a good sign. That looks like a Linux system booting. This is the configuration menu that uh, comes up the first time that you start the Raspberry and operating system. You can launch it uh, after the fact just by typing raspi config from a terminal window. But uh, while we're here, let's see, expand root file system. So when you, when you write the SD card, it only takes up two gigabytes, I think it is, uh, of, of space. And it will, uh, this will allow it to use the entire SD card. Uh, change the password. The default user for a Raspberry and it's named Pi, P-I, and the, and, the, and the default password is Raspberry. So you can change it here. Uh, let's see, this enables an SSH server so you can log in remotely from a command line. And the boot behavior. Um, do we want to start from a command line or from a, uh, from a GUI desktop? Well, uh, let's start with the desktop and we can always use a terminal window in that. Shall we boot straight to desktop? Yes. All right, so now I'm going to finish and let's see. Would you like to reboot now? Sure. And there it is, there's Raspberry Pi. It's got a web browser. Here's Midori up here in the corner. Um, Python games, Scratch, Pi Store. Pi Store is like an app store. Uh, Wi-Fi config, Debian reference. Um, terminal is a terminal window. And of course, since this is Debian based, it's got all the, uh, the good stuff that Debian comes with, including the aptitude package management system. So I can say sudo apt git install um, install them. So I've just installed the, uh, the Vim editor here. Well, let's see what it's got. Um, cat proc CPU info will tell us what kind of, uh, what kind of processor it's got. And cat proc mem info will tell us how much memory it's got. Top will tell us what's running right now. It looks like just a regular uh, regular Linux system. I've been using the Raspberry Pi for a few days now. And I really like it. It's a really neat little uh, thing. It's, it's, it's not as powerful as my desktop. I don't really want to replace my MacBook with a Raspberry Pi just yet. Um, but for what it is, for what it costs, for how much power it uses, it's really amazing. Um, it would be great as a media server. So I could hook one up to, uh, to like a TV in the living room and hook it up to Ethernet and use it to stream movies. I think it would be great for that. Um, there are some media server software packages you can download pretty easily. Um, I would like to make a doorbell button that would send me an email. So the Raspberry Pi would be really easy to do that with. Um, you, it's got analog and digital input lines, so you can hook up, uh, you can hook up a button directly to it. Uh, it uses just really, really small amounts of power. It uses, I think I measured it at like two watts of power. So you could leave it on all the time and it just would be fine.